Good afternoon, all. CamelbackTrading.org coming to you this Friday afternoon, November 1st. We're looking at Window Traders market profile of the ES and NQ. So after A and B pushed up really good, especially the overnight. Look, our overnights were totally long. We had no inventory adjustment. But when, like I tell the room, <clears throat> a lot of that long was probably short covering. Still, people were long, though, and they were comfortable being long. <clears throat> It continued in A and B, <clears throat> excuse me, but never could take out yesterday's high in ES and Q in uh, neither. We all end with inside days. Righty ends with just the day's high, the day's low, inside day. And Q ends with a nine wide point of control and an inside day. ES ends with just the day's high and low. We did probe, but not enough to use A's low, and we were only eight wide. Now, the big question is, generally inside days provide very nice opportunities going forward. However, Monday is the day before the election. So we'll see if we're going to get anything out of these inside days if we come out of them. We're still holding out gaps above. I had a good day. I gave back a lot, though, and, and we'll go over that in I period, which really ticked me off. My fault. I'll tell you what I did and why. Um, but I had a, a good day and ended up with a good week, considering how the week started. We're going to go over all these um, charts also and break them down. I actually took a long in ES to go get the overnight high because they were getting to it quicker than... And Q was, and that worked. And then I jumped on my five lot to get the overnight high in NQ. NQ spent some time in a period back and forth through the thickness of the overnight. But once they got away from it, that was it. <clears throat> B period. I took the long. Now, I knew there was something coming out. But I was like, you know what? That's not going to stop me from buying it. It was not a five lot. It was only a one lot. But I got it to pop B's high. And then on ebb and flow trades, taking longs because the market was acting really well. Then we attempted to go trend, which failed. So we're holding this year 29% of our trend days up. Last year was 34.3. So we're over five points, percentage points lower this year in holding trend days up. Um, but B period worked out with ebb and flow trades. And then C period also worked. I got the IB high, and I also bought the single print fill when it first happened. Now, once they filled the single prints, I said, if they do go make new highs, I'll be looking for shorts now. And I did that in both D and E period. Nothing big, but shorted it because for my money's worth, they failed to go trend, and this big gap above is something they didn't want to go entertain just yet. So those shorts worked out. And then I took a long in both G and H, thinking it could be the afternoon pullback. Now, we never ended up having one because M took out J's low. But those trades worked very nicely at the time, especially H period, which at the time was right at half back and value low. So I was having a great day. Then uh, uh, <clears throat> we, we go all the way up in H. And eyes about to open. I'm like, I think we're going to finally stop one time framing down. So I take a two lot right before the turnover. Instead of taking out G and H is high, came back and I got long some more, which was the wrong thing to do. And it really pushed down. I gave back 80 points on my day. Still had a good day, but I gave back freaking 80 points. I gave back $1,600 for no reason. Um, the proper trade at that time is what? To short. Because you're still one time framing and you know you're out. I was being an innovator. I'm like, I think we have an afternoon pullback in H. I think I is going to pop it. I wasn't expecting to go to highs. I was just looking to stop the one time framing. Well, we didn't stop that till L period in NQ. So that one gave back a bunch of money, which I wasn't happy. And then in K period, I took one more long, um, some ebb and flow trading, thinking they might go pop it and stop. I made money on it, but they never took out J's high either. We didn't take out the one time frame until L. So the entire afternoon, the bears really controlled the action, even though on our checklist sheet, 
the Bulls won the day. Again, that checklist sheet is a guide. It's not something to say, well, the Bulls are up 5 nothing. i got to be buying this. No. It's a good guide. But sometimes the MGI, with that checklist sheet, does not mix what, where price is tra trading at. All right? It's all context. All right. I'm not going to go over, uh, because I put these in bigger increments, I'm not sure if the targets are right, so I'm not going to go over them. So let's go to these charts now. So next week, we have two very, very large things. You have the election Tuesday and the Fed Thursday. There's some other things out, but nothing really big, okay, other than those two. So how are we going to trade on Monday with the inside days for all three of us? Are we going to have any real uh, um, action if we come out of them? Is the election going to be settled by Tuesday night? A lot of things we don't know yet. So let's break down what's happening. So the Russell is firmly in a five-month balance on the monthly. All right? Firmly balance. Their weekly also balance. How big is the balance? I would incorporate uh, the last seven weeks. Now, we see this so many times with IWM. Balance, balance, balance. And the daily, I called it down yesterday, but now we came into an inside day, so I would call it at least down to balance. So the IWM and Russell are still basically in balance on all three time frames. And Q, the monthly is balance. It's a five-month balance, not including this today, the first day of the month, okay? So they're waiting for more market-generated information. The weekly, also balance. They had a chance for an outside week down, but didn't get it. So again, you want to call this a three-week balance? That's fine. <clears throat> we'll see, you know, you want to incorporate all this? It's all subjective. The biggest picture is it's balance. It means we need more information. And the daily, the gap is still my main focus. Remember, we have the four-day island top gap and then the fill of yesterday's gap. So you can call it down to balance because it's an inside day. But the gaps are still your main focus. And then in the S&P, the monthly is up. It's the only one of the three of us that have a time frame that's up. That's the monthly. It's still healthy. Still one time frame and up. The weekly is down. Okay? The weekly is down. In the yes. And the daily is down to balance with the gap being our main focus. So the longer time frame is up with the monthly, but the weekly, to me, for now, is still down. The reason NQ isn't down because they took out last week's high, so they're firmly back to balance. Okay? But for now, I would call the ES down on the weekly. Some people might call it a four-week balance, and that's fine. So listen, you have all weekend digest charts and everything else. I would hope to see some real volatility pick up, hopefully not only next week, but through the end of the year. Come check us out at camelbacktrading.org. Give us a look for a month or a quarter. There's a lot of different price points. Go check them out. I appreciate you liking and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Enjoy your evening. Stay safe. And we'll speak prior to the opening.